deciding to create a garden is one of the best decisions that you'll ever make in life. But, like anything along the way, there are things that can trip you up. So I'm going to show you just how to get around them. One of my top tips is to always think like a beginner gardener. Never be afraid of asking questions. Ask your nana and your pop, your neighbours. Everyone loves to give help and you never stop learning. I'm always learning and that's really important. It is very tempting to grab your wallet and whip out to the local nursery and buy everything in sight. But that's precisely what you shouldn't do. Start off small. Think small quantities of things and where to put them. In fact, you might find that over the years some plants do die, but at least that gives you an indication of plants that will survive. And the whole thing about this is that it's giving you experience and hence more confidence. This is a community garden and places just like this are where budding gardeners first put a fork into the ground. One such gardener is my friend Isabel Robinson. Good morning, Isabel. Hello, Jane. This is looking good. Ah, thanks. She's asked me for a bit of advice and I'd love to help her where I can. Isabel, what got you into gardening? Um, well, I've always been interested in growing my own food um, and I don't have much of a sunny garden at home. So I'm just trying to learn as I go by putting different edible things into this community patch. So if you have any advice that you can offer, I would really appreciate it. Well, the first thing would be to know your limitations. That's really vital. Yeah. You're down by the coast. The community garden is right on the sea, and so it's got very sandy soil, and you just have to keep adding into that sandy soil just so it keeps sort of absorbing all the nutrients. So I bought you a bag of something. Oh, thank a you. A present. Oh, how delightful. <laughs> yeah. I would say every year, late winter into spring, See how that, mm. it's, you've got it looking nice. It's nice and friable. What does friable mean? That is such a good question. It basically is like when you make a cake and you know how light and fluffy it is? Yeah. Well, this soil conditioner is made up of a lot of composted bark and a bit of sand. And you can see how it falls apart easily. Yeah. Which means that there's a lot of air space in there and air's got oxygen in it and it's what the roots really need to grow. We forget what's under the ground. Yeah. And I see you've got a bit of um, horse manure in there, which is just rotting down nicely. Yes, yes. I got some of this over summer and, yeah, I just kind of spread it around. And yeah, let, it, let the worms do the trick. Yeah. yeah. That's good. And everywhere you see that it's compacted, just fork that over with a little trowel or a fork mm -hmm. and then add this into it and okay. you'll find it really will help. The question I've got is, what do I actually have room to plant? Yeah, it's fair enough too, because if you want a plant like this apple tree, see how tall it is, yeah. and it is really growing very wide and quite dominating, it will have a fantastic crop on it, you know, productive wise, but do you want your whole garden bed to be taken over by this one plant? If you do, that's fair enough, but you might prefer just to have one like this that has got lots happening in it, you know, potatoes and silver beet and, oh golly, all sorts of things, the cabbage family, kale. Following on from having the space for things, these broccoli are doing well because they have plenty of room to reach their maturity. Think about the final size of your crop. It'll tell you on the seed packet or the plant label. And, and the other thing is seasonality. Have you noticed that you, when you plant things and you end up with a glut? Yes, I have. Ah, <laughs> uh, what kind of things? Uh, zucchini, I had way too many and I had to give them away On some of them went a bit moldy. Yeah, that's right. You, yeah. are, you keep your eye out for just when they're right to pick. Yeah. And it is true, if you can, sow things so that you have a lot coming in then and then two weeks later plant some more so that they're going to be two weeks behind. Yes. And you will you get into that habit of mm. just thinking about, oh, I can plant that and then that and you'll get that nice continual yep. rather than everything coming, coming at once. Yep. Is there a plant that would bring the bees in? 
Surely is. That's a really great question for a beginner because I would always suggest a salvia. They're easy to grow and they bring the birds and the bees and they need pruning once the flowers finish and that teaches you how to prune. So it's really doing a good education job to grow a plant like a salvia. How do I know where to put a particular thing in the garden? I would suggest you take a photo. You know, cameras are part of your hand now, true, aren't they? True. Yeah. <laughs> so take a photo and, and take it around to some of the older members of the people here yeah. and ask them or take it down to your nursery and they'll be able to help you. And, and don't forget, the label will tell you the height and the width of the plant, so you can go by that. And also, it tells you how much sun it will require. A common thing for beginner gardeners to do is to overwater plants. Now, water is essential, of course, but you've got to have really well-drained soil because if a plant is sitting in boggy, saturated soil, the roots are going to rot and you can easily get fungal disease on the leaves. So make sure the soil is well aerated, nicely tilled up, and you'll be fine. Now, the same applies for fertiliser. Don't use too much. Just go with what it says on the label or the bag because if you overdo it, you can often kill the plants and anyway, you could be wasting that fertiliser. It could just get leached out of the soil. What if a plant dies? <gasps> <laughs> I can nearly bet you that most people here would have lost plants. I've lost lots and lots of plants over the years and don't get too hysterical. It's just one of those things, maybe you didn't do the right thing, but you'll learn from losing that plant. Mm. And it's all an experience to which you get more knowledge and more confidence. And that's yeah. the big thing. Don't you reckon it's confidence that's the thing? Yes, of course definitely. It is. Yeah. My confidence is slowly building. <laughs> and your knowledge is too. Yeah. I notice it. Yes. Yeah. Oh, thanks. Good. Thank you so much, Jane, for oh, your advice. That's all right. Appreciate Good to it. see you. Mwah. Good. Say hi to the family. See you soon. See you. The biggest tip that I can give to beginner gardeners is not to be afraid of making mistakes. Every mistake means a lesson learned. And the more you learn, the better gardener you'll become. So go out and enjoy it.